Good afternoon, everybody. It's Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple, and welcome to our weekly Nadex market analysis. It is February 2nd. Uh, it is Groundhog Day. I believe that uh, the Groundhog said there's going to be more winter, I think. I'm pretty sure somebody sent me a message about that. Uh, I will say I live somewhat kind of in the area, and I know there's snow on the ground, and it was snowing. So I'm pretty sure he would come out of the hole and say, no, nah, I don't think so, and just go right back in. So uh, <laughs> that's how it works. It looks like winter is here to stay for a little bit longer. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's dive into things today. We got a bunch to cover. Um, I, I'm sure at this point, pretty much everybody is probably out of peanuts. Uh, you know, peanuts and popcorn. Uh, we had the, uh, the 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 silver ride, the GameStop ride, the MC ride. I guess what was one of the other ones? Uh, Bed Bath and Beyond or something like that. Um, I, I think is one of the other ones. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, let's dive in and see what we can trade today. Uh, we can't, unfortunately, trade what happened two and three and four and five and six days ago. Uh, we can only go forward with things. So with that said, for those of you who don't know me, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Brian. Uh, I run a company called Keep Trading Simple. And uh, what I try to do is provide trading for, for people and really kind of breaking things back down to the most basic of levels. Uh, because my opinion is, uh, and again, this is my opinion, I feel like the, quote, professionals out there try to overcomplicate things. And unfortunately, the more complicated you make things, um, the less success and the more chance to mess up is what I see, and that's my opinion. I've created a number of different programs, for Natix in particular, the 30-Minute Trader, 5-Minute Binary Courses. Um, high Volatility Trading came out earlier this year. I have a weekly newsletter that I give out to my students. I'm actually working on something right now that, uh, that may be something I give out to everybody for free that people are able to get on the weekends. Uh, I was part of one of the big three advisory banks. So I spent a little bit of time in there learning about bonds. I've been trading since about 2000, the uh, the whole tech bubble time. So seeing a lot of up, left, down, right, sideways. Um, after the advisory kind of gig, I uh, left and, and went back out in the, in the world of teaching. Um, I realized there was a big need. A lot of people want to do this themselves. Um, and again, you, have, you, you definitely should do it yourselves. It's just finding the correct information and things like that is difficult. And, uh, you know, I know for me in, in particular, I, I'm, not, I'm not a 12th generation trader, right? Uh, my dad, you know, my my dad and grandfather, they were not on like the uh, the board of butter and eggs or whatever it used to be called. But, um, you know, I, I, I learned just like you guys did. I was a retail trader. Uh, I, you know, I, I went out there and back in, you know, 99 time frame, I, I, I was buying books of, you know, basically things that didn't work anymore and, and learned a lot what not to do. And uh, since that time, I've actually, um, uh, again, advanced forward, learned what not to do, learned how to help people, I've mentored a number of different students. And I have a, a big contingent of students now that I work with on a regular basis as well to help these guys be successful. And Nadex is one of the things that we absolutely love trading. So you guys will see some of that passion come through today. As you know, every week, my goal is to give you guys some type of golden nugget. Um, I want you guys to learn something new today. Look at something differently. Try something new in the markets. Um, and again, that may be uh, a new duration binary, or uh, it could be a number of different things. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in. Before we start, let me go to the Nadex risk disclaimer. Trading on Nadex involves risk and may not be appropriate for all. Members risk losing the cost and other transaction, including fees. Now, you should carefully consider whether trading on Nadex is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources, and any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. Now, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. None of the material included here is to be construed as a solicitation, recommendation, or offer to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Whoops. Oh, hold on. Let me set that down. I got some streaming software going, and it's already doing some crazy stuff. Um, so with that said, uh, Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC, and uh, Nadex is a registered trademark of the IG Group. All right, so let's go into what we're going to cover today. First things first, we have to cover the upcoming news events. Extremely important. Um, reason why is because, again, there are so many different trading opportunities, okay? So many different trading opportunities based around news, okay? Economic news releases. It's very easy to find. There's a calendar. You can look at it weeks in advance to figure out when you should be sitting in front of your computer. And we'll go over this week what, what you know, where we should be looking. Uh, last night, there was absolutely an amazing trade uh, in the Aussie dollar. We talked about it yesterday morning, um, and hopefully some of you guys were able to grab it. Then we'll dive into the indices and see what they're doing today and look for potential levels that we can trade. Uh, we can also, and then after that, we're going to go into Forex. Uh, then we will cover commodities. All right, we'll break things down. Now, Todd is going to try to kind of chime in a little bit today with different, uh, again, it's it's kind of hard to have a presentation up as well as kind of pull the Nadex contracts at the same time. So Todd is going to chime in. We're going to try something new today. Kind of the same, I don't know, kind of the same thing that we do for 
the early morning sessions from you know nine to nine fifteen in the morning, where if we find a good level, uh, Todd will kind of search Nadex and see if there's a binary call spread or something that is somewhat close. And again, if it matches your risk profile, you guys could take it. Uh, but again, that's based off of your individual decision, not mine. Um, so we'll try it new, and, and you guys let us know whether it works for you or does not. Um, let's go into the news releases. Uh, let's pull it right here. All right, so this is actually yesterday, and that's the, the news release that I was talking about, this RBA rate statement. Let's go into today. Now, today it was a pretty shy number, and again, there's news releases, uh, you know, this latest stories and things, and we've seen, you know, COVID-19, you know, maybe, in fe- you know, affecting inflation, and Kaplan is talking, and, uh, you know, and, and there's big news down here, but Right now, there's not really any blockbuster news that we had to worry about today. We do have New Zealand unemployment change and unemployment rate later, and Lois speaking, but the speech that he gave yesterday was the uh, the one that's a little bit more important. Going into tomorrow, so tomorrow we have some OPEC meetings, and there was actually a couple statements made earlier in this OPEC plus, kind of like the Middle East and Russia is, is really how to boil down what OPEC plus is, and you're seeing oil just explode higher. Now, tomorrow we have final services for the pound. So again, for any of you traders that are West Coast or overseas, I will say it is a little bit harder to trade it on the East Coast. But if you guys are awake at the UK open at, you know, around 3 a.m. in the morning, Eastern, PMI services, although final is not really a big one, uh, it may give us kind of a direction for the UK session in the morning. Now, OPEC will get meeting, you know, we'll get notes throughout the day. We do have an oil inventory report tomorrow at 1030. And especially the way that things are moving now, I mean, right now, the oil is just going gangbusters today. It blew through a level. It, it gave us a Harry Potter confirmation higher. And again, I'll show you guys that in a second. But the question is, are we due for a bit of a retracement? Is this news going a, a bit far, right? Is, is it going too much? Uh, we will get our non-farm, our, I'm sorry, our ADP non-farm employment change number. Uh, and that's, you know, projected at 48,000. Last time it was 123. And if you guys look in here, you guys can see that. Now, last time it was supposed to be positive 60, but came in at a huge disappointment. We'll see if that's also the, the same there. And then at 10 o'clock, we have ISM services PMI. Now, this is projected to be lower. We'll kind of see how much lower it could potentially be. But again, tomorrow morning is kind of chock full of uh, meeting notes. Again, like I said, between the pound and all the dollar news pre-market and then at 1030 oil, it could be a big morning. And, and again, well, I'll talk about it when we get to oil. The last couple of weeks, a lot of oil movement has actually happened in the UK session before we actually get the data. All right. The move has already happened and it's over and done with. And uh, then, it, then it comes in. Uh, going into Thursday. So Thursday, you can see that there is a big block of red here. All right. There's a lot of pound data. And you don't have to know what these are, the asset purchasing facilities and all that kind of stuff. But just understand that this one right here, this monetary policy summary. And again, the official bank rate, they're not going to lower it anymore. But right here, talking about recovery, right? And again, right afterwards, there's typically a speech, but talking about recovery in the UK, what it looks like going forward, and again, here's cautious optimism right here, talking, you know, coming in from the thing. Um, this could really set off Thursday morning's UK session. I mean, we're talking the potential for maybe 70, 80, 90 pips based off of what this says, and then through the morning. So this could be a really nice trading morning for many people. And again, this comes in, actually, this is coming in at 7 a.m. So again, maybe dropping down to those two-hour binaries, maybe from a 7 or an 8, depending on when Bailey speaks. And then, bam, we go into U.S. unemployment claims. We go into low speaking at 5.30, and then a monetary policy statement in the afternoon. So unfortunately, this is kind of an, uh, an awkward time for Nadex. But depending on what the reaction is, there may be some nice little setups on that one. Going into Friday... Bum, 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 bum. First Friday of the month, we know what we got. Non-farm employment change, unemployment rate, average earnings, and then again, Canadian data as well. And, and Canadian data, yeah, as much good, positive Canadian data that we've got lately, starting to see their unemployment rate tick up a little bit is kind of like, huh, huh, could there be some good trading opportunity? And I, w- I would say that there would be. I actually wouldn't be surprised if this is a miss. Uh, maybe maybe it goes up, maybe it comes in at 8.7 or maybe 8.8, but if it misses to the positive side, that could give a really big boost, right? That could give a really big boost to the Canadian, uh, the loony, and again, have this thing kind of, the, uh, the dollar CAD come crashing down very quick. And again, it is coupled with U.S. news, so imagine if, if this comes in at 8.7, but this one comes in at 6.8. So we have a, a worsening unemployment rate in the U.S., but then a less than you know, less negative, right? 
in the in the CAD. That could be a big mover very, very early on on Friday. And then we have uh, the Canadian IIB PMI afterwards, which, again, it's kind of important, but until it goes over 50, it's not necessarily a big deal. So, again, first week, rollover from one month to another one. There is a lot of different opportunity in here. And I always get asked, well, how do you trade those things, right? I'm telling you, I really love trading these things on a two hour, the two-hour binary basis. But we can get lucky sometimes with the call spreads and the knockouts as well. So it's one of those things like I can't tell you how to play this right now because it's Tuesday. This is Friday, right? But there's a lot of opportunity there. All right. So you got to focus on that one. Um, <laughs> getting messages of my other group. They're like, oh, you stop, you cut the stream. I'm like, yeah, I cut it. It wasn't working. Um, as far as the biggest news, you know, uh, CNBC, uh, again, if you're trusting C CNBC, I don't know, I guess she's coming from Imagine Company, but where the U.S. dollar short squeeze could extend further. Germany is planning to extend the state of emergency. Again, this is European-based data. Swiss GDP will decline. Again, not necessarily the best, but it's, it says roughly by 3%. Again, that could definitely hurt the Swiss. And then we have some, uh, again, monetary policy from low, and this was 10 hours ago. This was the big mover. So, again... Being aware of these things is always great. Um, I don't trade what they say. I trade where they are on a technical basis, all right, because that's really what's most important for me. So speaking of that, let's just go over and actually look at those, all right? So we'll start with the NQ. Now, the NQ, there's a couple different diagrams and things on here. You can see we're rallying back, all right? And we've had a couple areas. You can see that there's a little Harry Potter that we talked about here. Um, I believe we talked about this. I want to say, I believe we talked about this level. I, I, I know I talked about it with my group yesterday, but I know we talked about this level on Friday. We were really looking for a break of this 31, this 31, 200, basically 31, 200, right? Not, we don't have to do the six, right? But basically, we were looking for a break and a pullback. And as you guys can see, we did, right? We got the breakthrough, we got the pullback, and then we got the launch and, and kind of push higher. Where we go with this one now, I would say, I mean, at this point, this one has been really great to trade using the 15-minute charts, okay? Uh, if you guys are not watching 15 minutes, there's been some really nice, easy pullbacks. I mean, there's one over here. There's a little minor one in here. Right now, we're kind of looking for a top. Now, as you can see on the hourly, right? I, I know you guys can see my curse on this one, but I'll try to use the yellow to make it a little bit easier. This had a very, very big fall from grace. And there's a little bit of a kickback right here, and that's kind of where we're at right now. But for the most part, we are finally cleared through, and you can see we hit here. We're really clear until we get up to this 13,558, up to what, 13,600. That's kind of pushing us back up in those highs. Now, we've had some great COVID-19 data. We're not necessarily out of the woods yet. We could potentially be getting some stimulus. And again, the last we heard, there was a great meeting, uh, and this was a headline on Bloomberg earlier. There was a great meeting. But, it, you know, even though everybody was nice to each other, it did look like it was going to have to be a purely Democratic, you know, a, you know, Democrat vote through, which, again, they're able to do that. They have the numbers. They can push it through. Biggest question as a trader is, yes, we've had all this news. It's going great. The COVID numbers, of course, the COVID numbers are coming down. The timeline from the Christmas holiday or the, the you know, Christmas and New Year holiday has finally kind of passed. And, and we've worked a lot of that stuff out of the system. So, of course, the numbers are coming down. The rollout has been much, much slower. We've had great data. But is the economy really in a place that we're ready to take off and start going? And, you know, this may just be a reaction to kind of what we're seeing in the overall market. So a couple ways we can play this, depending on what we do the rest of the day. I mean, you know, we'd like to see that end of day rally, but we've had so much of a rally up. Could this be an area where profit taking is going to step in and we have an end of the day kind of bounce back to the downside? It's highly possible, right? And a four-hour basis, you can see, makes it a little bit more clear. We really don't have much until we get up in that area. So, you know, what I'm going to be doing is it, it's always hard to trade this starting at 12 o'clock when we really focus on smaller time frames, right? But right now, we know that the top of this level is really kind of hitting this 13,600 level. You know, ways to play this, and again, you can see it here. Let me kind of extend it out a little bit. Kind of like how we have the same Harry Potter here, right? Oops, I just wanted to take it with me. We could be looking for, again, a break of this level, waiting for a pullback, and then waiting for a push higher. And again, there's a lot of things that could do that, right? We get a day or two of some you know, positive news out there. We rally a bit higher, and all of a sudden, bam, stimulus comes in. That could be the launch point for us to go back up into the 13800s, okay? Um, now, I will say with some of the news coming out, the unemployment data, I do think that it is an opportunity for some type of a pullback. So depending on what we do with this level, 
if we get one of those patterns that that I mentioned is, you know, it, I, I call it that failure to go higher where we have a decent push. Um, I can't, let me see if there's another one over here real quick. Um, kind of like this, but um, I'm not, I don't, I don't like, kind of like something like this. If we get a, a clean candle based off that news, again, I'd be looking to take some shorts. But right now, the best way to be playing NQ is drop down to the 15 minute charts, look for areas of basing and pullbacks. And then again, once the open happens, pull the trigger. All right. Uh, S&P. So S&P is also rallying. Let's go back up to the bigger time frames here. Uh, we'll go back up to the, uh, we'll go to the four hour. So kind of the same deal. We are rallying up and we're getting into an area with sellers right now. You're able to see that kind of, let's see. These. Right in here is where you see sellers starting to step in. And again, it was a decent reaction. It was a very strong push to the downside. So we do have levels. Uh, you know, I would say that this is quite a large level. Um, the last time we looked for a Harry Potter, again, obviously we, we pushed up, but we got to be respectful of what's going on up in that level. And again, 3864, you know, you can see it's up here as well. 3869, you know, really from, you know, boxing this level out here, I would say that we definitely got to kind of keep our eyes on here. And just like with the NQ, you got to look to see what's going to happen with it. Now, is setting a trade up at 1217 when everybody's at lunch, is that the ideal situation? No, typically not, but if we can push up into here and we start to get a confirmation, remember, a Harry Potter, i.e. confirmation entry, could we get one of these and then a pullback? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? If we pull back down and then pull back up, we could be looking at this for the afternoon. And again, as the market, this is rallied up, we start getting profit taking, which typically tends to drive the number back down. Uh, and again, that's where we could go. So I'm really kind of see. I, I want to see what we do when we get up to this, thir this 3850. Uh, and again, we're talking about, I don't know, about 17 point range here on the hourly. Again, if we come back up and, and really start basing, I'm looking to go long. If it's a quick touch and pullback, I'll be looking to go short based off of that level. Okay. Now looking across at the Dow. So as you can see, the Dow is way up, pretty big, also approaching a level on the 15 minute. There you can see it on the 30 minute. Now, the last time sellers were here, it was a very strong reaction. We're starting to base before. It is lunchtime as well. And again, is this a parabolic move? Yes. Is it starting to run out of steam? Absolutely. Could we be coming in for the same type of trade entry? Yeah, we could. Um, looks like on the hour, he wants to go a little bit farther. But on the 30 minute, there could be, uh, you know, maybe a decent kind of short position here, right? Now, again, it's lunchtime. Volume is low. Wall Street is basically at lunch right now. But again, if we start to get a just a little bit more of a push and a pullback, this thing could roll. And if it does roll, I would say make sure we have our profit targets down here, approximately around the 3476. That's the origin of the move. We had decent basing and a very strong push off of it. That's got to be your target for buyers to step back in on any type of a push down. Now, there's not many wicks in here. A lot of times this will pull back to grab more buyers to punch higher. You're not really necessarily seeing that. So if this does start to turn and roll, again, 3476 would be a target to the downside. Um, I don't have it up. Todd, I don't know if you're out there or not. Uh, this may, you know, there may be knockouts or call spreads up here. Um, you may want to check that one out. We can always come back to it as well. But this would be one of those times where if be, as much movement as we had, we may have gotten a knockout or two broken out. There may be a knockout somewhere in this range. And like I said, I don't have it up. I'll see if Todd can pull it. Let's uh, let's let's see. If we, let's jump over there quickly. We're going to be okay, testing perfect. this out. Yep. Let me uh, just share my screen quickly. There we go. And we're on knockouts. Let's take a quick look over at the indices. You wanted to look at the Dow, yes? So we're in the Wall Street 30. Uh, let's just put these up here, move this out of the way, and we'll take a peek. Um, there are, and, and are, are you looking for, you're looking for a uh, a rollover or a breakout? Yeah, no problem. I mean, either one of them works, but you know, a lot of times when you see this big of a movement up, this kind of parabolic move up, I am looking for a retracement first. Right. And again, that so, would be more of a knockout position where a call spread or a binary would be more for the breakout. So, I mean, there, there, um, I mean, there are a couple of knockouts right in here. Um, at, you know, th I think this one probably makes a little bit more sense because uh, you're looking. Um, I mean, it's 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 close. That's, yeah, that, that would be the top side of the zone. It looks like up like that. Right, so. I'm 40 ish. I guess you got to take a look at and decide if, uh, if, if you get a, a confirmation rollover. Um, there might be some some interesting knockout in there. Um, and you know what? Just for the day, 
let's take a quick peek over at the, uh, and we'll do the daily call spread. Um, let's just see what we've got going on in here. And you know, for a rollover today, let me um, make it easier to kind of see, you know, with the call spreads there, you know, there could be some, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, you know, my only concern about that one would be we only have four hours left. You know, again, right. it would have to be a pretty It gets a little one. trickier. Yeah, yeah. I would but, agree with you. Yeah, but again, you know, in a couple hours, we have the, the, the new dailies print for tomorrow. So there may be some, opera if we can come up and base in that level and then the market closes up here, this could also be an opportunity where we're looking for shorts in the overnight, you know, or, you know, after hours um, in some type of daily position. So, so uh, yeah, definitely, definitely something for someone to take a look at um, with the knockouts. You just got to take a look and, you know, and, and with the knockouts, at least, you know, you've got a few days. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got because yeah, they go out. So great. Let me uh, flip control back over to you. Give me one second. Okay. And you can keep going. This is the, uh, the problem with multiple monitors. I'm like, wait, where is it? I got to find it. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. There you go. Um, all right. So. And now it's like, it's funny because I can see your screen when you're sharing, but then on mine, I can't see anything. Um, all right, so here's the Aussie dollar. We mentioned this this morning. We talked about, again, timing that news with the correct asset. Uh, for those of you that missed this morning, this, I don't know, this is like baby pumpkin squash food coloring. I don't know, but it's, it's the one that you guys can see. Well, that is the, the knockout bracket, all right? Uh, this is uh, an hourly position uh, right here where this one, actually, let me get my uh, my handy dandy little yellow cursor. I need to like blink for me. But if you guys are looking up in this area right here, this is that RBA, that Australian news. And look at this. This thing blew past its one to five, almost a one to 10, 88 pips to the downside. So we're talking about almost a one to 10 risk to reward ratio trade off of that one at night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, right? Place a trade before you guys go to bed. You don't just have to trade, you know, nine to five in the afternoon. But again, great movement. We're actually bouncing off of a four-hour zone. So you can see that we've hit it and pulled back. This is something, and again, this is what we were using for a target. Um, and again, in the overnight, the blue, you know, basically that was the, you know, I'll remove this so we can kind of get a little better view there. You can see we drove down in the European session really from late last night. It was actually the end of the Australian session through the UK session down. And now we're getting, again, kind of more of a correction phase, right? Impulse correction, impulse correction, riding this all the way down. And right now our red is kind of just hanging out. The question is, is this four hour zone gonna be the roll point? And we mentioned it as being a potential bounce for today. Um, again, we have gotten a little bit of a push up. You know, the question is, you know, will that be a, you know, a point? And, you know, for those of you guys that have been watching me, you guys know that I absolutely love my four hour zones. My four hour zones are, are some of my favorite. Um, we're kind of in the middle of the curve. Again, this gray is kind of the intraday one. But if I was using the larger time, I'd be using something along those lines. And again, this puts us kind of right here inside of like this no man's land section, right? Oops, I moved it already. Oh, it's over there. I was trying not to move that one. I was trying to move this one. No. Stop moving. It's this guy. It's not going to let me grab it. Anyway, the middle third is where we're a little bit more cautious with reversals. Um, like I said, it's continuing to push down. There's been talk today about the Aussie dropping even more. Um, as far as great levels go in this one, like I said, this is a, a level that I really like. Um, there is another, there's another level that's not bad down here at 7530. Um, really on the lower time frame at this point, it's like we're, we've been hanging so close down here. I feel like the Australian or the, even the New Zealand news tonight may give this a little bit of a bounce, but Really, either of those two levels is probably fine for me. Um, I would not be in this knockout anymore. If it continues to go lower, great. Um, if you guys wanted to hold that, fine. For me, it's the low-risk entry up top. That's why you have these. Here, I'll move this out of the way. There we go. Um, it, it, for me, the, yellow, the, 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 the pink and the green is really what I was focused on the most today. So um, I'd say we're, we're probably due. Um, Probably for a roll, but I don't love it. Like I said, the trade was the short last night. I'm not immediately ready to flip this around, um, really, until we get some type of a confirmation. And I may even wait to 75.31 at this point. Um, Aussie yen, there we go. So Aussie yen, again, the same type of drop. There's a couple different entries in there. For me, I'm waiting for 79.32. Now, this one is already starting the base, and we're consolidating in. The lows are getting higher, and we're kind of seeing a little bit of a cap put in. So. For me, um, 
I would like this one to stay negative, but I don't know that we're going to unfortunately get there in time today. Um, I was kind of hoping that we'd get down to the 79.32 before any of the news this evening. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to it's going to kind of get that far. But right now, again, my intraday curve level is going to be the 80.51 to 79.32. The larger time frame, again, going up to the four hours, you can see it would be this outside. And again, that is really pushing us down into what 79.05 up to 80.73. We got a lot of room to go, and, and really it's just been channeling, you know, at this point, channeling sideways, waiting for it to kind of go lower. So, unfortunately, this one is not set up for news right now. Who knows what it's going to do into tonight? And, again, even if it's tomorrow, the ADP number will affect this one a little bit because it will affect the overall stock market, which affects the yen. So, no great trade setups in this. Euro yen, as you can see, we had a short up top. This one has rallied all the way down. There's been a few pullbacks. Um, in fact, it uh, looks like here was one from yesterday at 10 o'clock. Here's early this morning. It was a very small, very, very small pullback. Um, and again, we're kind of sitting and bouncing on a, a level right now. So where this one is, is kind of poised, last time that we had price, and again, 126 was our target, we're sitting right here at 126.25. And you can see we took one bounce and a push through. This would actually be hit number three. Kind of raises the chance of a, you know, a little bit of a push through. But what worries me about this one this box right here right here these ascending candles here typically mean that buyers stepped in buyers stepped in buyers stepped in buyers stepped in they try to punch it down buyers stepped in so it's an area with a lot of buyers sitting right here typically when we have an area that's been hit three times i'm, I'm all over taking a short what concerns me about the euro yen is we got a lot of drama right in here now do i think the european uh currency is a great strong position no i think it's going to need to grind through this i'm just afraid that right now looking at this at noon we're not going to get enough movement the european session is open we're not going to get enough from the yen coming into this level we got to see if it's going to just come and stabilize and grind sideways what i would do if you guys are going to stay up late i would look to trade this one tomorrow morning um not that there's a lot of great european news but i'd be looking for some you know some clear kind of four hour levels unfortunately this one is a bit choppy in that area so this one may not, we may not get a whole lot out of it. I think the first really decent is 125.43. We'd need to drop about another 70 pips. And that's kind of a lot in one day with no news on that one. Um, but that would be really the best level that I'd say, hey, if we can get to 125, I like that. Otherwise, there's a couple small areas to chop back and forth. I'm afraid there's just not enough in there. Uh, again, I think this would be forcing a trade more than anything else. And I'm just not into forcing trades. Okay? Uh, looking at the pound yen. So pound yen, as you guys can see, just came off of a 30 minute level. I'll go back up to uh, an hourly. Uh, you can see, uh, again, another one that we called in the overnight. It had some basing and had a nice drop to the downside. Um, again, this one actually had a, an alert that went off right here this morning. Right now, let's see, let's pull these off. Let's see, uh, I don't need this now because we have it on the hourly. We'll just go up to the hourly and use that one. There we go. Um, so bigger time frame curve, I would still use these same two levels, right? I would still use those same levels right now. Hmm, I don't think that I would be willing to take this short, even though we're starting to get a bounce, right? I know we have an impulse move and we have the correction. This was a pretty decent level. It did go farther this time than it did prior. But do you see this little gap down here? We got an area just below. So it's a level on top of a level. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this actually to the right. There could be an opportunity if we come a bit lower to take something long coming off of this 143 level, right? 143, basically 143 or three flat right there right because again we gapped into there buyers stepped in punch price up we based and then they try to drive and again buyers stepped in right at that same gap and then launched it higher again so you know maybe one little push down the one to three is a little bit high but for the most part i think that's pretty decent if we can just base around and you know it'd have to move about 30 40 pips to the downside in the rest of the day this would actually be a decent level to take off the uk open tomorrow uh, if we haven't broken it. and again if we come down and in base you know in the next four or five hours look for a short on this one as well i think we could you know there's a potential short about 60 pips to the downside if we come in here and don't bounce if we base look for a harry potter continuation to the downside particularly in the uk session 
Um, it's all going to depend on whether or not this area holds right here. Okay. Uh, jumping across to the $8. Okay. Euro pound. So this one had a couple different areas. We, we kind of, we, we, we made a couple diagrams here and said, okay, this is what we're looking for, right? If we get a base, we're looking for the drop, right? If we punch through, we did not punch through. We kind of came back up. So that eliminated this, 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 and this. Okay. But we did have the Harry Potter and I'll place it right here. If you guys can see it, we had this, we had the pullback from there. And then we had the punch higher, almost to the exact point that I talked about. Um, right now, we're, we're rallying back up again. I'll delete those three off. Uh, let's go back up to an hourly and talk about where price is currently. So um, we have a level up top. Let me pull this one off because we don't need it right now. I would say the way that this went on an hourly basis, I would I would keep this on my radar here. Let's pull I don't need this one right now. I'll just pull another one. This level here at 136.90 is a decent base. It, it went off of an area, but I like the reaction off of it. I think that's pretty decent. Um, we've driven, this zone has been pushed to the very, very brink. So I would not be focused on that holding again. I would say if we can get price to rally up, 136.90 is a decent run. If we get nothing but green candles up, I'd like it even more because that was where buyers stepped in last time, down here at 136.16. So again, 136.90 would be an area where I'd want to set an alert. Um, you can do that by grabbing something like this, pulling it across, and, and basically, you know, again, there's multiple ways to do it. If you guys need a Forex platform, go over to IG. They have a really good alert system um, that can even shoot alerts to your phone. Um, set it right around that level. Look for that base right there. And again, if we can come up, look for a little bit of a base, a little bit of problems. Rolling back down, I think that's a pretty decent area as well. Uh, Euro pound. So Euro pound. And we were looking for the pullback. We were looking for a break, and it did. It did give us one. This is one of those cases where, you know what? We would have taken a loss. And that's going to happen. It, it is what it is. That's why we have our limited risk in here. We were looking for a drop. We were looking for a base. It gave us exactly what we wanted and then pulled up and started the base. And we're in the same area right now. This is one of those situations. Had we taken this breakout to the downside inside of spot currency, we would have most likely taken a loss. Had you taken this with a call spread or any type of a binary, it wouldn't have mattered that it drove back through our risk level. And in fact, right now, it'd be kind of right where we started the trade at. We'd be right at break even. Um, or, you know, again, depending on what, you know, what duration you used. But that's one of the advantages of the binaries and call spreads. If it does push through, the most you can lose is the cost end of the transaction, including the fee. If this was a knockout and it was super close, then, yeah, you would have gotten stopped, although I doubt there was a knockout sitting here. Anyway, right now, it's still set up for a short. Um, you know, I, again, this would be a pound strength short European weakness. Uh, the biggest question is, are we going to get through this green level, um, you know, which is kicking in right here around 88, right? 88, zero, double zero. Uh, but if we can come through and, and start to push lower again, your binaries and call spreads there would not be, uh, you know, could be pretty decent. Now, are there, is there going to be a lot of movement over the next couple of hours? No, nah, probably not. Um, like I said, both of these are, both our markets are closed right now. It tends to kind of base and stabilize. So again, this is where the one advantage of the uh, knockout is the fact that it, it has three days left in it. All right. Uh, for pushback down, but I do think this 8719 I think is still in 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 target um, by the end of the week. Um, I do think we will get some more positive pound data and again negative European data. If Germany's locking down. Germany's not going to be the only one that has to do additional lockdowns. Um, I think there'll be other nations over there. Probably France next uh, could continue to push this lower. So for me, again a continued break. And, and again at this point, if you want to adjust your Harry Potter lower, you can always do it off of this level as well. Wait for a break because we know we have a big open area here. Look for a break below 87.93. Uh, and again, maybe wait for the uh, the contracts to expire today and then look to get into something tomorrow. There could be a, a decent call spread in here with approximately, I don't know, maybe $20, $22 risk uh, that you could take uh, a bit lower. And again, I don't, I don't know what the contracts are. I don't know what they're printed yet, but they will be in uh, you know, at 6 p.m. when Nadex opens again today. Uh, that could play the, 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 the run down. Now, Euro dollar. Euro dollar, we had a couple different things in here. We uh, missed our, our entry here by about uh, four pips, right? And again, it's a shame because it went all the way back up. It hit right where our target was supposed to be. So again, whenever you get front line, front front uh, front run like that, you, you really can't do much. It happens in the market. It's kind of like a no harm, no foul, right? Um, unfortunately, it is what it is. Since that time, you can see that we did get a pullback. And again, this is kind of that 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 zone that was broken. Actually, I'll just use the red target. It's easy. The zone that was broken now becomes the entry for the short. 
Okay. Um, and I think, let me go back. Yeah, you can see it right there. I wonder how many times we hit that level. So we went hourly. Uh, one, two. Yeah, so this was due to break. Two, three. Yeah. Four is what broke this one. So, yeah. So, again, this would be the Harry Potter to the downside. All right. Again, this front run does count. Um, they took the last little bit out of what we needed on that one. So, there you go. There would have been your short today. And, again, dollar, dollar play. Now, what do we do with this one next? Again, if you're not into it, don't get into it right now. I would say I would start looking for bounces in this one. Probably down here in the 119.50 range. It'll be a psychological level being that it ends in 50. I would use a little bit of caution in this one because, again, I don't really believe that the, the U.S. is in a strong dollar position. Um, like I said, Democrats coming out with a bill that can't be stopped for stimulus. I believe that they will continue to weaken the dollar. I don't think that they are a strong dollar play. Um, again, with Yellen making comments about this is going to be a really deep recession unless we go real big, that tends to be dollar weakness. Now, the European Union, with their news right now, is weaker than we are, so that is probably the only thing keeping this one running. But right now, I would say, hey, I would, I would have to say, I would keep the, you know, I would, I would maintain the bearish kind of sentiment on this one until we get down to the 1950 range. And at that point, on the four-hour basis, you can see that we have levels here where buyers have stepped in. But right now. We're in this, right? Right now, we're more or less in a racetrack, straight to the downside. And again, we don't have buyers really stepping in back down in here until the 1950 range. So, you know, not much we can do on that one until it gets back down. All right. Now, Dollar Cad, we mentioned Dollar Cad's been interesting. And this is one of those ones you can see is uh, <laughs> this is an hourly chart. So let me um, just move this sideways. Let's go across. Let's get this one out of the way, too. Right there. All right, so talk about channeling, okay? Here was a trade from the 29th. Here was where we ended on Friday. Now, again, I don't hold trades over the weekend. Obviously, you can't trade those things over the weekend. There's where we opened. It ended up filling the gap and dropping all the way to profit target, came back up, and then this morning at 9 a.m., it gave us the entry again, and it's already gone to 3 to 1. So knowing where gaps are, knowing where your basing levels are are extremely important. This one has been nice because it's come from this middle of the curve area. And again, every time it peaks its head up, it gets hammered back down again. Remember, Friday when we have the Canadian and U.S. date at 8.30 in the morning, this one should be pretty interesting. Now, would I look at this zone again? Kind of hard, right? Because here's number one, here's number two, here's number three, and four tends to be the breaker, right? But... If you guys can see what's sitting right here, there is a four-hour zone kicking in right there. Now, that's a pretty big zone, right? That zone is kicking in at price level 129.06. So, if we can get dollar strength, that's an area where going into Friday morning, I could definitely be swayed to look for a short on that one. Now, again... Same thing, you know, I don't know knockout wise or anything else if there's anything up there, but that could be another one for late in the week that you may want to keep your eyes on, right? Um, and again, it's these type of levels, particularly for big releases. When we can find four hour levels, that tends to be what I'm looking for for all my news releases. And actually, you know what? Let me let me pull it up real quick. That's around 129. Let's see, where's the back side of that level? Ooh. All right, so look. There's a 129.32 as the ceiling. There just happens to be a knockout bracket with a 129.40, right? A 129.40 ceiling. Okay. So I'm telling you guys to get short now. Absolutely not. What am I saying? If price gets back up into that level, there is a knockout that actually does match the technical analysis. And again, if you feel that there, you know, it's an area to go short, there's a potential trade set up there, right? A little bit of risk in that one. It's not the smallest. It is based off of four-hour levels, but I love four-hour levels. The positioning of the knockout ceiling is also in a great place, and it's always wonderful when those things match up. So, you know, maybe something else to keep on your radar. Um, like I said, I, it's always nice when they match up, and that's a good one. Now, Dollar Swiss. Oh, Dollar Swiss. So, Dollar Swiss is pretty interesting that we had a level in here. And again, I was looking for either a break or a bounce. And it ended up giving us a very, very fast one. Dollar Swiss is one of those things that it gets kind of crazy, right? Um, I can go back and let's see. Um, come on. It's not going to do it for me right there. 
this was a European open trade. Now, one of the things I like about the European session is it really has the power to change, change things around. Because remember, it's a new day. Well, this one dropped in here right for the European open at three o'clock. So although we have a Harry Potter for when this does break, this is too easy of a trade setup. All right. So I don't know if you guys follow these at all. Dollar Swiss is not the most popular pair, but since the, the open this morning, it's moved 46 pips in what? Eight hours, right? Most of the movement, 35 pips coming out of this one. Uh, that, that happened in what, two and a half hours. So again, a lot of movement very, very quick. So right now, what I would say is this level now has been hit, uh, what, one, two, three, it basically be three or four. So again, still looking for a break, and I can move this across so it's easier to see. I'm looking for a break of 89.40 for a short. Uh, on the bigger time frames, you can see we really don't have anything until we get way up. So this one is kind of set up for a dollar runner all the way up to 90.71. Swiss data has not been great. We have seen some negative Swiss news. So the question is, if we continue with the dollar strength, is this a long-term, not long-term, but as you can see, once we clear this area here, right, there's there's not a whole lot going north. So, I mean, I guess there could be a, a, a debate. You know, we could say, hey, listen, could there be a Harry Potter if we go much, much higher? The answer is, yeah, you, you could potentially do that, right? So there could be a confirmation up. And again, the one to three is sitting there below the four hour level. So and that could be a trade. Again, this is most likely because it is a four hour. Um, I expect that we get some type of pullback off of this, but this could be something or they're late in the week or early next week. If we punch through looking for targets up in 90, 71. Okay. So yeah, in the near term, I would expect probably some type of a pullback, maybe down into this level here of basing. Um, but again, if we can get back up again, I'd, I'd, I'd be willing to take something, you know, kind of this direction, right? Uh, actually, I guess first we'd be looking for the break here and then go look for a rollover. So a lot of in play for dollar Swiss, and that's not something to look at all the time. Dollar yen has just been cr cranking higher, 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 higher. Uh, as we mentioned yesterday, 105.25 is where we start getting into the daily and four hour levels. Um, that's on in a small term, uh, not small term, but on four hour charts. 105.37 is a magic number for me. You can see them both over here on the right-hand side. If we get up into those levels, I am also very interested in doing uh, a bit more analysis and checking that one out. Now, this one is a little bit interesting. Knockout-wise, there's a 105.25, but unfortunately, the 105.25 puts us kind of right here. It's a little bit too shy, so I believe that that one is going to get broken. There is one up at 105.79, which is sitting right here right there that one i'm kind of a, a bit more interested in taking something along these lines and again that would be a decent runner to the downside it would look something like i'm here and i'll change this to red it would be something along this line and and again we got a bunch of movement i don't know that we're going to get there this week but i could be you know swayed and in, in, in thinking that hey listen if we can get up to there there's potentially a knockout there for early next week maybe a sunday night trade where we see dollar weakness coming back in, and we push back lower to the 104.88. So we got a bit of room to run. Like I said, the first level is going to be 32 pips away. Again, I would not be interested in a knockout for that one. Uh, but again, if we do punch up into this this higher level here, up into the uh, 105.50 range, there is a knockout that is starting to come into play, which I think would be pretty interesting. Now let's jump across. Let's look at gold. <laughs> Gold has been a fun one. So we've had this uh, this 1831 level pick basically forever since the, I don't know what, 15th of January, even actually a little bit before that. And then we kind of had top sides of uh, the 70 range, the 60 range for a while, and then we kind of uh, pushed back. But the, the, the 1830 level has been pretty popular, right? Uh, and you can see we also took a bounce it off this morning. Um, again, kind of a free fall. And yesterday, if you would have caught yesterday morning's uh, YouTube session, we mentioned that silver was just cranking higher, right? I got my microwave popcorn. I was watching it saying, hey, listen, gold is not moving. Gold and silver are linked, right? Gold and silver are linked. Silver was spiking. Gold was doing nothing. And I said, hey, listen, when silver finally runs out of gas, you know, I got my butter and my salt on my popcorn, maybe a little white cheddar. As soon as it rolls, look for gold to fall very quickly. And it did. I mean, not that, not that silver is not collapsing. We'll cover that one in a second. But this one is, again, Great little trade setup over the last 12, 13 hours or so to the downside. Again, any of your profit targets, there's multiple ways to take this. And again, gave us a little bit of a bounce here, bounced off the gap, and then continued all the way back down in the 1830. So big question is, 
are we going to see a balance? And we kind of have today. The question is, you know, what's driving this is the main is the main function, right? There's not a whole lot of news. Again, stimulus. Now we, you know, we just saw news a little while ago. I think, uh, where is it? Uh, Don, we saw it over here that, you know, how, how COVID may be affecting inflation, right? Seeing patterns about, you know, people have avoided restaurants and bars. What does it mean? Um, you know, inflation is then measured. So we're starting to talk now about inflation, right? So it, it's kind of one of those things where we've been waiting for inflation to rear its head. We have not seen it yet, but now people are finally starting to talk about inflation. So is this the end all be all buy? No, nah, probably not, but it is something we need to kind of get a little bit more in focus. Now, is afternoon gold trading the best? No, no. Typically, the you know gold tends to be the bigger mover with the European session. That's where we tend to see a lot. And again, large spikes get retraced. Large spike up, retraced. Large spike up, retraced. Large spike down, retraced. Large spike down, retraced. If you say that this was the spike up, we retrace back down again. So again, is this considered a very emotional parabolic spike? Not so much. This was actually pretty healthy with its impulse and corrections to the downside. But I would say if this starts to stabilize and, and kind of hold here, we could be for we could be up for a positive gold day tomorrow as well. And again, uh, Todd, do you got anything on levels for this one as well? I think you had yeah, something let's, to talk about earlier. Yeah, let's let's actually jump over there real quickly. Um, might as well. I think I got it up there. Indeed. So, um, oh, you know what? This let's uh, let's take a look over at the knockouts on gold. Um, and oh, here we go on the platform commodities, gold. Let's click on any one of them just to populate the chart. Uh, the nice thing about uh, our knockouts is that you can just choose them <laughs> from from the uh, from the chart itself. I mean. You, you and I have been talking about this quite a bit, and I want to use this as an opportunity just to remind people every morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Eastern, Brian and I go live for 15 minutes on YouTube. We live stream and do a very abbreviated version of this uh, session, but we do it specifically for that day. What are the hot spots in the market? Boom, before the US equity markets open, you get an opportunity to take a look at a couple of hot spots. And we've been talking about gold where it's been seeing uh, sellers come in up at that 1870 level, buyers coming in at that 1830 level. If you've been paying attention, you've had actually quite a few opportunities uh, to take advantage of, of that particular range bound trade. Here, I wanted to kind of extend that out a little bit. Uh, and there are some knockouts in here that you can do so to find risk, to find reward. That's that's the beauty of those knockouts is uh, you can, uh, you know, choose to try to take advantage of these moves. And again, you don't have to hang on to them. It, you don't have to wait the three days for, you know, the contract to settle. I mean, you, you've been able to knock these back and forth. And because knockouts are a Delta One product, uh, meaning they move right in line with the underlying. So call spreads, there's going to be a little bit of a premium. When you're trading binary options, you're talking about the probability of an outcome. Um, but if, if you notice the indicative underlying price, it's it's generally going to be right between your bid ask spread. So it's it's a way to take a very pure directional play on the movement of an underlying asset. You just have your 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 boundaries around that. So again. Uh, been a great opportunity and the other thing that you know that i want to mention because you're talking about inflation is we are sort of waiting to see what the ultimate outcome from any stimulus is you know you've got uh, one side looking for 1.9 trillion uh, another side coming back with 900 billion i mean that's a fairly significant difference but in the end uh, if they're able to come to some type of an agreement and even if they're not and the democrats just push something through uh, with the COVID impact to inflation uh, compounded by a lar another large stimulus package, it, it could potentially bode well for the price of gold. So something to keep their eye on. And uh, Brian, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back to you. Okay. I don't see anything yet. <laughs> like I said, it's like a game, three monitors. I'm like, wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> And and we're kind of hoping you guys like that we kind of move back and forth a little bit, not a, not a whole bunch, but as Brian does some of his analysis and being able to 
uh, see an application where you might be able to want to take a look specifically on the Nadex platform. Uh, you'll have to give us some feedback. Let us know what you think about that. Uh, but please remember, join us every morning, 15 minutes. Uh, we've got quite a, a crowd of folks joining us, and so I uh, would welcome more. I'll All let right. you uh, bring it home. Can you guys see it or not? I think so, right? Yeah, we got we got your your emotional move down in silver. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is Reddit um, taking it to Wall Street, sticking it to Wall Street, shutting them down. <laughs> like I said, guys, I've been pretty negative this whole kind of rally up. I was like, I don't know what people are doing, like why anybody would do this. But anyway, the yellow areas are basically what silver has done since we talked. Now, my 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 group of traders that I work with, um, they're always joking that like that Uncle Warren watches what we say sometimes. Isn't this amazing? Like this on a 30 minute basis. This is what silver has done from the time that Todd and I talk in the morning. Right. So somebody is listening. I don't know who it is, but somebody's listening. Right. Um, Silver's collapsing. Again, there was a nice trade up here. You guys can see how much, how many dollars this thing has moved so quickly. I mean, again, I'll put some of the price tags on here. You can see that this morning when we talked, we were at 28.55. And, you know, now it's actually even farther. We're, we're all the way down here. You know, we've seen over $2 worth of movement. I mean, silver is getting hammered. You know, it's one of these things. Um, you you got to be prepared for these type of moves. I mean, these are not, this has nothing to do with actual, the, the, the fundamentals of what silver is worth or value. This is pure speculation. Um, and in markets where there's speculators, you're going to see these big moves. And again, can you still trade them on a technical basis? Sure, absolutely. You're still having pullbacks, right? I mean, things are still stopping, you know, at, at different places. But, you know, right now, the question is, where does this stop? Like, where does silver, I mean, where does the pain disappear from, right? It, it is the big question. I mean, you can see we had this basing where silver was kind of stuck for such a long period of time between this kind of 26-ish range, you know, down into the the, the kind of, you know, Basically, the, the high 23s and 24s, I mean, right now on an hourly, you can see, you know, is there a lot over here that's going to stop it? I mean, there is a there could be a small area right here, maybe a little bit around $26. But I mean, at $2.50, I mean, people are going to be trying to offload this thing everywhere they can. So, I mean, I would say, I mean, we have four hour levels that are starting to kick down here around the 25, 35. But I mean, really, any type of basing or pullback. I mean, you, you got to kind of be thinking, like, if this is over, should I be long or short? I mean, like, all this moment, I mean, what will happen is these emotional responses, like, oh, Reddit users are going to take down the internet. They're going to stick at the Wall Street. Great. You guys jumped at $5, which is great. I mean, it's a 25, you know, 25% increase, right? You know, you had huge, a huge burst forward. But once once there's nobody left trading, it, it, it's just going to return back, and it's the it's the philosophy behind you know the parabolic retracements that you know I have the course on. It's retracing back to the origin of the move. So I would say overall downward side targets on this one are 25, 35, right? Um, again, we'll probably have a little bit of a hiccup at the 26 marks. 26 is a psychological level, but we're most likely going to go right back into the same thing. Now, understand like. I think a lot of people get kind of wrapped into the hold hoard mentality, right? Oh, you know, it's you know, why did you do this? Because everybody else was doing it, right? I mean, that's why people got sucked in. But understand, gold is kind of that hedge for inflation, and it has other uses as well. Silver is also an industrial metal. Could you imagine if silver did stay up in the $50 to $100 range? And if that was what the fundamentals justified, do you realize what electronics costs would go up to, what construction costs would go up to? Again, there's a fundamental reason to have silver, and it's not to hedge for inflation. So things like this, there actually will be lasting effects of this. And it's kind of like, you know, you reap what you sow. So, I mean, unfortunately, there are people that bought silver up here in the 29s. And I hope to God they're not still holding it, hoping that it's going to go back because they read it online. So, again, try to remove the emotion or what you hear. I mean, when everybody's doing it, that's the worst time you guys can get in. There were people that were buying it up here up at 29 because they heard – in Reddit or by somebody, their their brother, uncle, mother, or step you know stepfather, was saying it's going to 100. There's a lot of money to be lost here. Again, this is one of the reasons why I do and I fully support people trading Nadex because again, your risk is limited to the cost to enter the transaction and plus fees getting in. This is a huge amount of movement. If you guys were in binaries or call spreads, you know even a knockout in here. Amazing opportunity, guys, for these shorts. And like I said, I still think there's more to go to the downside in this one. I have absolutely, I had, I had no interest in getting, you know, long for two or three days either. But I think there's some great opportunity on this one coming back down. And once we do get low, remember there'll be kind of a rubber banding effect back to the downside as this kind of pushes back down. And if if you guys, you know, don't know what I mean by rubber banding effect, um, 
I don't use a ton of indicators, but if you guys know what Bollinger Bands are, um, Bollinger Bands use statistics based off of kind of what the average price is. And you'll see when things get breached, they always tend to revert back to the mean. And this is one of those ones that it's going to revert back to the mean. You know, it's going to it's going to come back to where it, it, it's supposed to be. Um, and it's just, you know, are you on the right side or the wrong side of it is really going to be the big question. Uh, last but not least, like I said, silver, I'm, I'm, I'm negative on. Um, there is one thing that I do want to mention with oil. Um, where is it? Um, let's talk about oil. Um, I think it's over here. Yes. So here's what we heard early this morning at about 8.15 from OPEC+. Plus. I mentioned in the news that OPEC Plus is having a big meeting tomorrow. And the question is, how do we trade it? Well, OPEC, and again, I'm going to say this right now. Take this with a grain of salt. OPEC is not a third party. OPEC is not a non-biased party. They are not making predictions on what the world looks like. They have a stake in this, right? OPEC plus experts see oil, oil stocks dropping in every month. Basically, how much supply do we have sitting there, right? Falling by 460 million barrels in 2021 under the on our base case. They also see the, the, you know depleting by 1.1 million barrels per day on average this year, right? Basically saying that they see the demand going down. So when you, or I'm sorry, the supply going down, right? When supply goes down, you guys know this, right? Supply goes down. Demand goes up. What direction does price go in? It goes up. Does OPEC make money, more money when oil goes higher? Yes, because they are oil producers. When it goes higher, they make more money. So could this be slightly biased? Sure, right? Um, earlier this year, we saw them make these comments. The price raised up. We saw, I believe, is whether W, maybe, maybe the World Trade Organization. I forget who came out with it. But somebody said that they see overall demand dropping for, you know, the most we've seen in, in 10 years, right? So it was amazing that OPEC was like, oh, no, no, demand is going to be high. It's going to be a strong recovery. Price jumped, and then all of a sudden, a third-party non-biased oil producer came out and was like, no, nah, demand is going to be the lowest it's been in five years. And we saw it pull back. So looking to see what oil did, uh, let's see, where is it? Right here. There's oil. So we had a level down here at 35, or I'm sorry, uh, 5350. And again, if you look at this, there's one, there's two, there's really your three, or you can count this as your three, your third hit, and then boom, it broke. When these things hit multiple times, and again, every zone will eventually break, right? Typically, three to four is the magic number. In this case, you could argue that this was three, and then this was four where it broke, or you could say that this is three, and then it pulled back, and then four is what broke. But what did it do? When the zone breaks, the strategy is Harry Potter, wait for a rally, a base, and a pullback, and then boom. Okay. Price was able to drive all the way up to $55. There's actually a level up here on the really daily, but then refined on the four hour at $55.50. But right now you're seeing profit taking step in, and we've watched price drop back about, uh, we got up to 25 and about 50 cents to the downside, not uncommon. So this is going to be a very interesting trade setup going into tomorrow's oil inventory report. Now, historically, what we've seen, when we've seen a big burst the day before, I mean, look at this. This is, an, in a, this is a huge rally from $52, right, all the way up to 55 in that short of a period of time. Again, we're looking for a reversal. So there's a couple of ways we can play it. Uh, again, depending on what time we get back, but there's a level of basing right here. Question is, will we come back down and will this be a base for the UK session to go up? Will this be a Harry Potter? And will we see, let me get the right ones, will we see the same down and push back up again, right? And then drive lower. Okay. So the question is, are we going to base and give us the confirmation pattern higher for the UK open? Will we come down and grind back down in the UK session to base here? And again, could we see prices fall back into the 5250 range? Absolutely. I'm glad OPEC that believes it, you know, that the supplies are going to go down. But if we don't need the oil, does it matter that the supply goes down a million barrels per day? No. I mean, Australia is locked down. Germany is locked down. If the U.S. does any type of lockdown, <laughs> I mean, again, people being locked down, we are not using the oil that we were using last year. No. Demand is down. We don't need as much supply. 
nothing justifies the price coming up. So again, we could get a really nasty oil inventory report tomorrow, and this thing could come all the way back down in the same time. Now, on a larger time frame level, I do think the 5550 is a great psychological level. Triple five is zero. Awesome level to take shorts out of. Uh, again, it's a larger zone as far as risk goes because it is based off of a daily zone, but it's the last time we really had any major sellers. Everything else right now is kind of intraday trading. So, you know, this level from 5420 down to 5394 is one that I'm definitely interested in. Um, again, if we come and we do this type of basing again, you know, again, I'm going to be looking for shorts down here into the 5260 range. All right. So, with that said, guys, that is our, our last chart of the day. Uh, again, Make sure you mark your calendars for next week, uh, noon Eastern time on February 9th. Uh, for those of you that haven't heard, I hope you guys have heard, but every single morning on YouTube, 9 to 9.15 on Nadex. If you do miss it live, you can watch the replay of it. Um, we are on and we're talking about the, you know, kind of the top one or two opportunities of the morning. Uh, make sure you join us tomorrow. Todd, do you have anything else out there? No, I think that, that, that that's pretty good for right now. Just remember, join us tomorrow morning. Uh, the more, the merrier. All right. Sounds great, guys. If you have any questions for me, you're more than welcome to shoot me a message at support at keeptradingsimple.com. Thank you for joining us, and we will catch you tomorrow morning at Nadex. is uh, on Nadex's YouTube page. Take care, guys.